So here we are with episode 10 of the Apothecary Diaries. Last episode, we learned that Fang Min, the head lady-in-waiting for Adu, is the person who attempted the poisoning of Li Shu. So uh, I assume that's where we're going to head next. So it'll be exciting to see what's going to happen. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon and early access to non-seasonal and some seasonal shows like this one on the YouTube memberships. Other than that, let's get started. Thinking about more about the, the whole flower stuff, right? They kind of showcase the clover and then a flower that blooms from the clover. I would assume, you know, in the way that we saw her green and yellow, the green herself with the freckles, that's the clover. And when she takes off the makeup, she's the pretty yellow flower that grows from it. But that does kind of make me wonder if like the yellow flower from the clover hides. I don't know anything about flowers, by the way. <laughs> wow. Just drinking liquor under a beautiful night sky. Is that Jinchi? I can't tell, honestly. <laughs> Servant at the Garnet Pavilion? She was the one? And so she killed herself? How convenient! <laughs> oh, because she's getting a little too old. One year older. So the Emperor's 34, alright. Mmm. It's all fleeting, huh? Mm hmm <laughs> Always giving her snacks? <laughs> Stop throwing. <laughs> Skilled of a concubine. And then there's that woman who, uh... Mmm. <laughs> yeah, that taster. <laughs> That's good, I guess. Ooh. A little honey in your tea? Oh, orange poop boiled in honey. All right. Uh oh. Uh-oh. That's it! <laughs> Hot ginger water. Hey. <laughs> she got kicked out. Why? Why? <laughs> she just wants to do work. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. God, rumors just be spreading all the time. Yeah, what is she, a detective? Yeah, what is her... Why would she do it, huh? What does she gain from it? <laughs> oh my god, look how tiny she was <laughs> when she stands in front of him. <laughs> Just come here to observe. Fongmin. I, I keep forgetting the E as well. Fongmin. She has a drogonous, almost gallant kind of beauty. <laughs> a young son. Damn! <laughs> you know what? I agree. <laughs> she remind you of? Does it start with a J? Can you help with the parlor as well? Mmm. Have we seen Li Xiu's he head lady in waiting? I don't remember. That's what you get for being such a hard worker. <laughs> 
Oh, I can't imagine what it feels like to sleep in just... What is that? Fur? He just knows your curiosity will get the best of you. Mmm. She's well past her prime. Damn! <laughs> so just need to get rid of like the youngest so then the, another one? Yeah. Good! <laughs> mm. From the candle? I guess it's the honey wax or something? Oh, there's Li Shu. What's she over here? Yeah, what is she over here sneaking about? Honey? Casual attitude. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, she figured that out. What if it's just a mask? Are you a spoon feeder, honey? <laughs> oh, no, not the... No, not the finger! No! No! Stop! Oh no, she's backed against the wall! He's looking elsewhere! I don't see any! No. He's getting lax in his hips! <laughs> Same. Get her a spoon at least, you fuck! There's nothing to kick there! <laughs> You know what? It's an opportunity to just bite it. <laughs> bite his finger, you know? Might as well. Aconite syrup. Oh, is she also allergic to honey? Like, girl, how many things are you allergic to? <laughs> Kick his ass, Gokuyo! <laughs> He's running away! <laughs> Oh, she's just saying it's just a prank, bro? <laughs> uh-uh. You can do the licking for me. <laughs> Expecting Jinshi. Mmm. <laughs> oh, so cute. Oh. But you're the one who was making fun of her before. Every single one of these women slap uh, need, need a slap across their face. Ooh, why I oughta- Yeah. We're always looking at- <sighs> Take it up to the manager. PTSD because of this woman. What are you gonna tell me? Fung Min used to be the head lady in waiting? For Alicia, I mean. Seventeen! Ah, shit! Lumen. Lumen? Oh, her. Oh. Okay. So her. That's why he's like, what a 
fate. With a bone remove, he expelled. Well, he says he's a eunuch as well, right? Because he's... If anybody works in the rear palace, they have to be a dude, I mean. So then there's that whole thing that, like, you know, he adopted. Because she's 17, and he looks like he's 50 at the very... <laughs> 50 or 60 at the very least. <laughs> and he looked like that even when she was young. <laughs> Well, I mean, not to say that, like, men within their 50s or 60s can't produce a child, but he's a eunuch. <laughs> I'll have to look at that part again, though, when I go write some notes. But okay, so Fangmin was there with Adu, so she's been with Adu for, you know, a very long time. We only got to see a little bit of Adu, and we, we get to hear that she's, uh, she's, uh, she's an androgynous woman, you know? She <laughs> Got her girl swooning for her. <laughs> yes. Ah, preview. All right. Uh, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna go write my notes, and we will be right back to the center. Non-stop probing. <laughs> Is it part of the nature of being a woman to be cautious of the same sex? <laughs> you seem more wary than when the emperor is here. Well, you know, when the Emperor's here, you know that for the most part, he only has one thing in mind. <laughs> Other ladies, though. Wow, we don't know what's going on there. <laughs> he runs so fast. <laughs> This scene right here, absolutely adorable with Li Shu. <laughs> ah, so cute, dude. So cute. I love just the way that uh, the way that they draw her. She's just like glancing around. Ah, oh, that's so adorable. We must protect her at all costs, and also. We need to slap every single one of these lady in waiting and then fire them. <laughs> every single one of them. Also, where is the head lady in waiting? <laughs> Who? Who? <laughs> Her attitude just changes after she's like, Oh yeah, you're the lady from the dining party. All right, what do you want? Do you dislike honey? How did you know? Ah. And then, ah, and then she starts pouting. Ah, so adorable. <laughs> so, did honey upset your stomach in the past? When I come in for someone and didn't have trouble with honey. And then she just says, it's life-threatening. As a baby? As a baby? I heard it was life-threatening. So nurses told her not to eat it. And then the fucking lady in waiting is coming in. Just like, oh, how dare you probing lady leash you like that. We care about you, Lady Lishu. So, like, don't fire us anything so we can keep bullying you. <laughs> Wait, hold on. All right. Oh, hold on. I'm a, little, I'm a little confused about this part. 17 years ago, the current when the current emperor was still a prince, he had a son with concubine Adol. Adol, baby, was already gone, but he was born around the same time as the prior emperor and empress dowager's son. So the son right now, the, sorry, his brother, the emperor's little brother, right, the current emperor's little brother, is 17. So he's around, like, the same age as Mau Mau. That's what I'm getting, right? <laughs> God, the fact that, like, the, the fucking emperor and the empress dowager and shit, right, uh, they don't have names they just they're just the emperor and then it's like oh the emperor when he was a prince and it's just like <laughs> fuck <laughs> wait hold on the emperor is 34 right now and adul is 35 right she's a year older than him and that was 17 years ago they were 17 <laughs> oh my god <laughs> ah well he was 17, she was 18. <laughs> this guy doesn't even look like he's 17 at this age. He looks like he's in his mid-20s or something. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so the current emperor and concubine Adol are foster siblings, so that explains his attachment to her. Okay. Foster siblings? But... 
What? Huh? Alright. <laughs> a former eunuch with a bone removed from one knee. Ugh. What? What the? What? I mean, that's why he's, he needs a cane. He's walking with a fucking limp leg, but uh, what? what? <laughs> oh, I just realized. <laughs> Looking back on this. Because, you know, as I was saying, I, I literally cannot tell the difference between some people <laughs> sometimes. Especially when they're, like, out of their regular clothes. No, I think this is Adul, right? She's just drinking out in the sun. Looks like it. She's just, uh, on the wall and shit. She's the one who climbed up here. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so that was episode 10 of The Apothecary Diaries. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty good episode. I really enjoyed it. We got to see the, uh, the, the more of the concubines, right? We got to see uh, a little bit of Ado, and we got to see more of Lishu. We got to see... Uh, in terms of Lishu, we get to see more of her rather childishness, which I thought was very fun, very cute. As I said, must protect Lishu at all costs, alright? If I could travel in here, I will slap every single one of those ladies in waiting. <laughs> Actually, before I go into, uh, uh, I will combine Ado and Fang Min together, but I'll talk about them, about th this whole thing in, in a little bit. But we have yet another talk about how mm, essentially bad this sort of system is. Well, not to say that it, the way that Mao Mao talks about it, it's just kind of like, well, this is just how the world works. But as we are living here in the modern age and whatever, we know that this sort of thing is, well, bad. <laughs> <laughs> and in the way that Mao Mao describes it, the flowers of the rear palace are meaningless unless they bear fruit. Before she said that, is that even the most beautiful flowers wilt over time, right? It's the idea that a woman is very much, uh, the beauty of a woman is pretty much what is thought of for her, right? This, that's the most important priority for a woman is to ha be beautiful. And if you aren't beautiful, if you're ugly, then you're pretty much unwanted, right? <laughs> Who gives a shit about you, all right? <laughs> now put on these deadly makeup and make yourself look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, it's something that we see time and time again, kind of like in, like, Victorian eras and stuff, right? When women want to look skinny and all that, they put themselves in a fucking corset that just fucking crush their ribs <laughs> in order to serve this sort of beauty. Or as what we learned last episode, I believe, right? Some women, be the idea of having small feet is beautiful and so they would kind of bandaged up their feet and some would like start off very young and that would like fuck up their feet for the rest of their life but you know all for the sake of beauty and such and anytime i think about this whole beauty shit i, I just think about that stupid stupid phrase that stupid meme that kind of goes around uh the the wording of men age like fine wine while women age like milk <laughs> and it's like I, you know, people say that all the time, and I'm just like, yeah, I get it, whatever, but... <laughs> right, it's, it's, there's a, there's a truth behind that, uh, uh, behind that phrasing, and it is very unfortunate, right? The older uh, a woman gets, and especially during these times, it kind of like with the way that Mao Mao talked about Fang Min, and how she's just like, you know, this woman, she is past her prime. And it's just like, oh, ouch. But if she wasn't, she could have been a good housewife. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> like, damn, dude. And, you know, during these ages, you're you're a little bit too fucking old now that you're like uh, 35 or some shit, you know? You're a little too old. We need to replace you with some younger, uh, a younger girl. <laughs> this whole conversation started because of the rumor that Adu would be replaced by a younger concubine. And that, well, she once had a male baby with the emperor. <laughs> like that, that's what the subtitle says, a male baby, <laughs> not a baby boy. <laughs>
a male baby with the emperor, but she uh, lost him. Basically, goes back to the idea, right? If the flowers of the rear, pa uh, the flowers of the rear palace are meaningless unless they bear fruit. So it's the idea that maybe even someone like Li Hua could be driven away as well, since she already lost a son, and if she can't bear another. Uh, another prince for the emperor, then what good is she? And then there's even Gokuyo. Even though she did bear a child, it's a girl and a, like, let's be honest. Girl babies? Sorry, female babies? <laughs> Baby girls? They're useless. What? Where are they got other than the fact that they're here to be used as trading materials, you know, just another one to the emperor's trading card? <laughs> What good are they for, you know? Once they get fucking married and shit, their last name is gonna be wiped away anyways, and they're just gonna be a part of the other person's family, you know? They just get absorbed into the husband's family. So they're fucking useless. <laughs> Can't carry on the the Emperor's legacy or, or whatever. <laughs> so even though Gokuyo has bore a child for the Emperor, if she can't bear a, a, a child, a, 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 a baby boy for him, right? A male pr a, a male prince, a, a, a prince, like the next heir for the Emperor. You know, it's just kind of like, well, kind of, uh, honestly, kind of useless. <laughs> or as Mao Mao says, if Gokuyo, uh, if the Emperor's love for Gokuyo fades away, she could also be kicked out. So despite the concubines being, you know, one of the four top concubines, their positions aren't forever and they are very much still, uh, still in danger of being kicked out. If we, you know, minus the other danger that they get into, AKA people trying to poison them 24 seven. <laughs> Speaking a little bit about Gokuyo though, we hear that she, well, the, the conversation between Li Shu and Gokuyo is a nonstop probing of each other's thoughts. Gokuyo is always trying to gather information. We know the way that she was described in like episode two or episode one, somewhere around there. She, she She's very good at what she does. And also her family, as we've learned from her ladies in waiting, because they were talking about their hometown and such, and they were talking about how like, oh, the trade has been really good in our country. And it's all because Gokuyo has a really good relationship with the emperor. Her family, her country and all that, it's like a, it's like a trade hub. So it's good that they know, are, they are able to keep up with the time. So, uh, that's why Gokuyo does what she does and sends it back to her family, right? So it <laughs> goes into the idea that even though she's like here as a concubine for the emperor, she's also here to benefit her family in order to get information on the latest things that's happening here and then sending it back to her family, right? So they're able to keep up with the times. I am repeating myself. Sorry, I'm a broken record. <laughs> Anyways, Feng Min. We hear that her family runs an apiary, which is like a bee farm, if I remember correctly. That's where all the honey comes from and such. And that's why her room smells sweet, because I assume she's burning honey wax or something somewhere around there. And uh, we see that uh, from the observation that Mao Mao does is that she is a very observant woman. She knows how to praise other people, right? How to learn essentially give them encouragement to get them to work even more. <laughs> she also leads the work as well, right? She's the head lady in waiting and she could just be out here telling people what to do and that's about it. But she serves as a prime example of what you should be doing. So if you see the head lady in waiting working, then you should probably work hard as well. And also she is highly loyal, perhaps, right? She, I mean, she served Adu for a very long time. So we kind of have the idea that she perhaps could be very loyal. And that plays into the idea that if Adu is going to get replaced by a younger concubine, there could be a reason why Feng Min is trying to kill Li Shu because, well, Li Shu is a flower that hasn't really bloomed yet, right? The emperor hasn't really come and visit her. Thank the fuck God. <laughs> oh my God, when she, when she's, <laughs> when she, you know, when she hits like, when she's 16 or 17 or some shit, I'll, ah! <laughs> but because Li Shu hasn't really done her job as the concubine just yet, it'd be easier to get rid of her compared to trying to get rid of Gokuyo or Liwa. And despite not getting the information from Jinshi, she learns that Feng Min has a burn on her uh, on her arm and she possibly could be the person who did the whole fire thing, right? The colorful fire in order to, to, to have a code and such. We also have Jinshi who asks Mao Mao whether the servant from the Garnet Pavilion actually committed suicide or not, right? Could be a suicide, could be a murder, 
but maybe, but right now, you know, kind of looks like a suicide. She Apparently, she is the girl who did the whole poisoning thing, and there's a notebook or, or letters or whatever that that's very co conveniently placed that says that she committed suicide. <laughs> very coincidental, you know? <laughs> oh, she attempted this, and then she died, and then there's the question of, well, she's just a, a, a lowly servant of the Garnet Pavilion. What does she gain? out of doing this. And I wrote in my notes that if Adul doesn't know what Fungmen is doing, F Fungmen is doing, right? If Fungmen is doing this out of loyalty and she wants Adul to continue staying in the Garnet Pavilion and such, and if the way she, the way that she's doing it like this, right? She's doing it behind Adul's back. And since uh, if Adul doesn't know it, then she can't be punished harshly if they found out that uh, somebody in Adul's uh, lady in waiting are the one who caused this whole thing, right? If Fangmin is willing to fall for Adul, right, to to commit these crimes and then take take the hit for her, I, I do wonder if that would be the case. If Adul doesn't know about it, of course. But when it comes to characters like Fangmin, if she's a little too nice. <laughs> And there's a murder going on, a you know, a poisoning going on, and we know that she's got the burn scar and all that, you know? Maybe she had a kitchen accident. I don't know, you know? Maybe she's just out here trying to cook something, and then the fire got a little bit too much, and then it burned her arm. Oh, you know, who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> she maybe she's not connected to this whole murdering thing in the first place but just the way that she is you know she, she's a little too nice right she's a little too not to say too perfect but she is trying to be and so it's 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 a little sus but i think the one thing that really cooks up the sauce for me <laughs> is when mao mao asks li shu about feng min right here in the scene she asks are you familiar with lady feng min the head lady in waiting at the garnet pavilion and then we just see li shu just like going oh shit <laughs> just from hearing her name she's just like oh fuck and we also saw Li Shu walking through the Garnet Pavilion, accompanied by just the taster, asking why is she at the Garnet Pavilion. Which then Mao Mao starts to think about the 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 apiary or the sorry at the tea party. She starts thinking about the honey and how uh, Li Shu's unable to drink said honey and such. So, uh, the <laughs> I can't stop saying sus now. <laughs> the sussy thing, <laughs> the suspicious thing about Feng Min is the fact that even though she puts on this mask and she seems to be this great lady uh, around everybody. We have Li Shu who seems to be very afraid of Feng Min. And the thing with Li Shu is that she's about 14 right now, but from what I kind of had the assumption is that seems like she got put into this whole thing at a very young age. She probably hasn't had time. She still doesn't have time to grow up. And with the, uh, you know, the potential amount of stress that she gets from being here in this place and from having the title of concubine, you know, knowing the, <laughs> of what she should be doing, she probably doesn't have a lot of time to grow up. And a lot of kids, uh, when they get into this sort of situation, right, they, they have two 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 things not like the only options but like the two things that comes in mind is that they grow up a little faster right they grow up a little bit too fast or they regress and they become even uh, they act even younger than how their age is and the way that i see lishu is that she kind of regress and she uh despite being 14 she still acts like she's i don't know 10 or something that's what I feel about Li Shu, and I say this because when it comes to kids, they're able to uh, cut through the bullshit for the most part, right? Kids when they're like seven or eight or something, they just come up to you and ask like the most savagery thing. <laughs> Because they don't really think about the, the social aspect of it. it it's kind of like it, they, they go up to somebody and they're like, why are you drunk all the time? Right? They just cut right through the fucking bullshit. <laughs> And it's just like, oh shit, you know, oh, well, that's, that's, that's a whole big thing. But kids, typically, they're able to understand the, uh, the, the situation a little bit better than most adults. It's just that they're unable to 
put it all together, right? They're, they're unable to put all the pieces together a lot of the time because their brain isn't just, uh, their brain isn't developed enough for them to understand why these things happen, but they can see it. And so if Li Shu, who is just this, you know, who, who's just this girl, who's just, a, who's just, you know, out and about, and then she hears Feng Min, she hears the, the, the name, and then she's just like, oh shit, right? Something is uh, something bad is going on with Feng Min. <laughs> That's my only evidence. <laughs> Look, if you've got somebody who's like acting really nice and all that, you know, maybe they might even be like a parent or something. And uh, if you just see them by themselves and, you know, you might think that, uh, they're a good person or whatever. But then if you see them with their kids and like their kids are uh, look look afraid of them, there's something wrong <laughs> you know, because kids they shouldn't be afraid of their parents right they they they, they shouldn't be afraid of adults you know, unless something bad fucking happened to them and that's why they have that fear showing off in them you know i think kids can be upset be mad you know if their parents is like oh i wanted this thing from target but my my, my dad refused to let me buy it and now i'm really upset at him right like that that's understandable but if they're fucking afraid there, there, there's something wrong. There, there's, there is something wrong happening, and unfortunately, kids are unable to describe it and able to tell their feelings because they might not have the understanding on why they feel the way that they feel. So, that's the whole thing about Feng Min. And uh, here we have Li Shu. Oh, again, 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 again. Li Shu must be protected at all times. Can we also, you know what? I've I've upgraded. Instead of just slapping her ladies in waiting and firing them, can we also slap her family as well? Can we? <laughs> Every single one of them deserve a whole fucking a full hand, a full hand right on their fucking cheek. <laughs> Every single one. The mother, the father, the siblings, if they've got them. <laughs> Actually, I, I think that if she has siblings, I, I don't think they have any other choice. <laughs> but fuck it. <laughs> Friendly fire is coming in. <laughs> other than that, uh, yeah, the only thing that sucks is that we get to see more of Li Shu's ladies in waiting bullying her and the way that they're trying to do that is by cutting her off of any potential good connection right for, for anybody who would probably tell Li Shu that hey your ladies in waitings are kind of fucking shit <laughs> and uh, and, and the late and her ladies in waiting they don't want that they don't want her to realize that they've been a fucking shitbag to them this whole to her this whole time because i would assume they're using her for her position and ladies in waitings they, they get to live in a nice pavilion and they're probably you know having a ha having a, a swell time just living in this place instead of being a, a regular servant in the rear palace, right? It's better to be a lady in waiting. And also they get someone to bully. So like fucking grace. It's a win-win situation for them. Oh. <laughs> and towards the end, as Mao Mao reads more on the history of Adul and the current emperor, 17 years ago, the, the emperor had a kid with Adul and it was also the same time as when the prior emperor and the empress dowager had their son, aka the current emperor's little brother, who we still haven't seen yet, albeit, you know, some people have been making the idea that perhaps Jin Shi could be the little brother to the current emperor. And uh, as I was saying, Mao Mao is 17 right now. Uh, Adul and the Emperor were 17 slash 18 prior, so 17 years ago, so like the little brother has to be 17. So I suppose we would have to figure out what is Jin Shi's age, right? If he is around 17 too? <laughs> I suppose he could be the little brother. <laughs> you know what? That would kind of make me feel just a tad bit better but still not really all that better but yeah it would make me feel just a tad bit better if like if, if Jinchi is somewhere around 17 or 18 for some reason I, I don't know I don't know but if, if that's the case you know it's uh, again it would make this whole situation between her and Mal, uh, him and Mal Mal a little bit better but still not by a lot <laughs> but it's still worse if he's like in his 20s or something <laughs> But 
while this whole reading thing happens, she finds out that the baby was de delivered by Dr. Loman, who is her dad, right? And then we found out that Loman was expelled, and that kind of explains why this man, who is just way too good to be working as an apothecary in the Pleasure District, why he's here in the Pleasure District in the first place. And, and so it, it explains why when her dad hears about that, he's just like, wow, what a twist of fate, you know? <laughs> My daughter's working in, in the rear palace now, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, I'm still thinking about how, like, Mao Mao got adopted by Lumen in the first place. I would assume if he's staying in the Pleasure District, perhaps she could just be a baby that was born from said stuff that happens in the Pleasure District, right? And then the, the woman who had the baby probably didn't want her because she's still trying to work in the Pleasure District. So, you know, can't have it taking care of a baby. So perhaps Lumen is the person who takes her instead, you know? Maybe he was also the one who uh, helped deliver her. <laughs> and then the woman didn't want her. So, you know, Lumen's just like, okay, I guess I'll just raise her then. <laughs> we still don't know much about that, but it'll be interesting to hear more about it so yeah it's very nice to just unravel more of the mystery that's going on and uh yeah very much enjoyed this whole episode very enjoyable you need to show me more uh m more lishu but also i need, need to, to see, see lishu's, lishu's entire, entire ladies in waiting get wiped out, out. <laughs> <laughs> that it, it has evolved from just being slapped and fired to just wiped out you know what? Still the same. All right. Still the same. <laughs> but it'll be fun to see more of Adul though, right? Adul, talk, they talk about how she's, she's very androgynous and like she could, if she dress up, dresses up, she could look like a young civil servant. You know, they are also fighting the Huns out here. You know, she could just be Mulan. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next episode.